college sports. We have to be a team that does a great job doing what we're coached to do. It's time for the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show. It's more important to decide what you're going to do and just explode and do it. They're very young guys. They're going to get explosive all of a sudden. Games aren't won on one day. Games aren't won with one play. Games are won over the course of an entire week. This is the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State IMG Sports Network. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Washington State Cougars. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. Tonight's show is also brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino, by Zeppos, the home for the Cougar Coaches Show, and by Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Now live from Zeppos alongside Cougar head coach Mike Leach, here's the voice of the Cougars. Matt Chazanow. Cougs are ranked 25th in the country. Game day's here. 12th ranked Oregon. Pullman is, Pullman's always the center of our world, and now it's the center of the college football world. Game day's here for the first time in 15 years of old crimson flying. Uh, Reese Davis will be here in about a half an hour, I'm told, give or take. Of course, Mike Leach is on route from uh, the practice field. It is uh, Thursday night football, so he was taking a look at some, some of the young guys. What a great crowd we have here at Zeppos. Hit round of applause. This place is packed, jam-packed. If you're listening on the radio, it's shoulder to shoulder. Uh, we're, let's get something right off the top right away. The Jerry Kylo fan club is here in full effect, and they're here every single week, and Jerry does such a great job. There's so much that's been going on. Cougs off a of bye week. We've, we've not talked in person about the 56-37 win in Corvallis. That was not an easy game. That was a lot of trick plays and a lot of gadget plays thrown at everybody, 56-37. We need to talk about the incredible 52-year legacy of Bob Robertson, and I'll talk to Coach Leach about that. A round of applause, absolutely. Bob, for 52 years, Bob is the voice of the Cougs, and, and his work lives forever, and and uh, there's just more going on here than, than maybe ever uh, feels like ever has been going on before. We're going to relive the Oregon State game. I got word that Coach Leach is on route. Reese Davis, we've got the third seat, third headset set up. So much going on. Let's relive the game in Corvallis. Take a break. Come back here live with Coach.
Back here live at Zeppo's, we'll have Coach Leach in just a moment. He's coming off the practice field. It's the Oregon week, the Cougs and the Ducks. Cougs have beaten the Ducks three straight years now, looking for four straight W's over Oregon. They've done that three other, four other times in history. The Cougs have had four win stretches over Oregon, so they're trying to do that for the fifth straight year. The Ducks come in 5-1 and one and 2-1 and one in the league. Their only loss was to Stanford. The Cardinal actually play tonight. They play Arizona State on this Thursday night Pac-12 midweek game. So the, the only loss that Oregon had was 38-31, against the Stanford Cardinal in, in an overtime game. A, a late fumble from the Ducks wound up giving Stanford a chance to win that one. They, they won in overtime, a missed Husky field goal, 30-27, to 27, and that resulted in the, the Ducks' opportunity to get one that they, uh, they may not have had had that field goal gone in in all likelihood. And then, uh, and then two weeks ago, they beat Cal 42-24, a game that wasn't too close. Prior to that, that Stanford game I just mentioned, and then they also played San Jose State, just like the Cougs did, in their non-league schedule, it was 35-22. The Spartans were shut out by the Cougs. They scored 22 points against the Ducks in a 35-22 win in Autzen, and then they beat Portland State handily, 62-14, and knocked off Bowling Green, 58-24. Download the all-new WSU Cougar Game Day app presented by Gus Johnson Ford today. Enjoy exclusive content, maps up to the minute news, live audio, game day offers, and more available in the App Store and Google Play. Download today. So I'm told Mike Leach will be right here. With Reese Davis coming, what we're going to do is get rid of another break right now so we don't have to take one while they're here. We'll take a break and Coach Leach will join us in just a moment here live at Zeppos. Talk 1 268 4825. Live from Zeppos alongside Cougar head coach Mike Leach. Here's Matt Chazanow. Back here live at Zeppos. It's always a celebrity show when Mike Leach is here. We also got Reese Davis, who just walked in, and we'll throw a headset on Reese if we have the opportunity to in just a bit as Coach makes his way on route from Thursday Night Football in, in, in just a phenomenal coach's show here that's jam-packed shoulder to shoulder. For the world's most refreshing beer, 21 means 21. Celebrate responsibly with Coors Light, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. 4.30 kick, the game day set is being built, and all the, the folks from ESPN Game Day are, are here in Pullman, the center of the college football universe is here on the Palouse. Cougs and Ducks played the game in Eugene last year, 33-10. to 10. 
was the final. It wasn't really all that close ever. The Cougs had it the whole way. Uh, Luke Falk, 282 yards, three touchdowns last year in Autzen. And, and then, of course, two years ago, back here in, uh, in Martin Stadium, you remember the six rushing touchdowns that kind of came out of nowhere, almost 300 rushing yards. They had 280 rushing yards and six touchdowns in Martin Stadium just a few years back. And there's a lot of familiar coaching faces on the other side of the field. Joe Salavea, the D-line coach. Jim Mastro, the running backs coach. Both those guys are in Autzen. And Mario Cristobal is in his first year as the head coach for Oregon. Uh, He was there as an assistant and then got elevated to the head job when Willie Taggart went over to Tallahassee to take the Florida State job. So it's a first-year Oregon head coach. It's his sixth year coaching overall. He was, he was in, uh, at Florida International for uh, about half a decade, a little over that, was Cristobal. Of course, Gardner Minshew is the nation's leading passer. Gardner at nearly 70% completions, 19 touchdowns, four interceptions. And Gardner also has the two rushing touchdowns, so he has accumulated 21 touchdowns and four picks this year and has been just phenomenal. He uh, started out with that second half in Wyoming where the Cougs got that first win, 21-27 passing, and has really never looked back and answered so many questions. Uh, Folks, no one knew what to expect, and Gardner's been just incredible. Nearly 70% and 2,422 yards, 2,422 yards for Gardner. He's thrown the ball 40 times to Tay Martin. Tay Martin's third in the pack in receptions. And as much as the Cougs throw the ball, they also distribute the ball quite a bit. And they've gotten Tay Martin number three in the Pac-12 in receptions. James Williams leads the nation in receptions by running back. James with 32 catches leads the nation. Aesop Winston with his 29 catches is also fourth in the pack in touchdowns. Aesop's had a lot of end zone trips this year. He's been in the end zone five times. He's number nine in the pack in receiving yards. Had he had one more yard last game, he would have had three straight 100-yard receiving games. And, and that's in league play. Aesop's blown up in league play. Round of applause for Mike Leach. As Coach Leach is here in uh, Zeppos to a standing ovation. And we'll get Coach Leach and Reese Davis both on the headset here at Zeppo's. What a great show this will be. Coach, how you doing? Good to see you off the practice field. How the guys look? Uh, I thought we looked pretty good. Um, we had good energy out there. And then uh, had a bunch. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mike. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, we, we go back a ways. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, I thought we, we bounced around pretty good. Had a uh, good Thursday night football. Uh, battled it out. Defense kind of had the upper hand. But... Uh, Move the ball around a little bit. Reese, how you doing? Welcome, I'm, to, welcome to Pullman. I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, we've been we've been given quite the welcome since we've gotten here. It's been great. That was uh, that was a uh, fun video. Chaz, Chaz and I were going to work with Reese on broadcasting a little bit. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a Syracuse grad, and in the world of broadcasting. Uh, the inside pool, you pretty much have to be a Syracuse guy. Otherwise, oh, you're, you know. He, he always likes to take jabs. And, I'm, you know, I'm BYU, so you can imagine where that puts me down here. <laughs> and, then, and then he's, uh, I mean, I don't know if you're, uh, are you on the scale? Alabama, right? Yeah. 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 We, we've had our share of people, Mel Allen, back in the day, you know. Okay. But I'm the, you and I are the only ones old enough to know who that is. Yeah, probably. exactly. Yeah. Well, because, of course, ours uh, – uh, Keith Jackson was uh, Washington, Washington State. State. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to have a little Keith Jackson in the show on Saturday. We'll pay tribute to that for sure. I got. I shouldn't ask this because I've just Please. met you. Is yeah. this a Gardner Menchu thing? Well, going I, on with I, the mustache yeah, here? You're, it's, it's so it's a uh, it's more than attention than I bargained for for sure. <laughs> uh, Alex Brink, um, our broadcast analyst, and I have had a little too much fun with Gardner okay. Minshew, I think, and the wife has approved it. That's okay. the key thing. So <laughs> it may not last through the weekend, but it, I was I was kind of mandated that it, it had to last through here. I. I I can't believe it's noticeable enough for you. I'm glad. I, good to meet you. Yeah, <laughs> nice gl- to meet great. you, too. <laughs> that's no, great. I'm glad. No, seriously, everyone. He's a mustache guy. Oh, jeez. No, it's, yeah, <laughs> that's great. I'm glad that, that got right out there. Hey, so let's, let, I know you just got off the plane, but you've been with our director of athletics, Pat Chun, and, and, and you've seen a little bit of Pullman, and, and you saw the, the welcome to the buses. Uh, t- what's your initial knee-jerk impression of, of Pullman? It's, it's phenomenal. Mike knows I was here a few years ago to call a game, I think maybe 2013, so it's not my first trip to Pullman, but, you know, obviously with game day coming for the first time, it's a little bit of a different animal. And I think that 
the dedication and the passion that people have to have the flag there for 216, soon to be 217 consecutive shows. I mean, that, I think that's what sets college football apart. There's not that type of connection, I don't think, with any other sport that, that could have that happen with their fans that want to showcase their program. And, uh, and we're, we're gratified to be a part of it this weekend. Hey, you've known Coach Leach for quite a while. I have, uh, yes. Do you have a great – while we've got him on headset next to him, I mean, what an opportunity. Do you have a great Coach Leach story that comes to the top of your mind? or is, is it, co coach, uh, coach and I have, have gone everywhere now for the last few years, from tree houses to <laughs> you know, every topic you, you could imagine. A lot of the folk, friendly folks here at Zeppos are firsthand uh, to that. You know what? We seem to wind up together, Mike, a couple of times, National Football Foundation, when you're at the Preakness, I remember. Oh, yeah. we, we hung oh, out at the Preakness. That might have been, uh, that been the, was that the Barbaro year? I don't know. It was uh, oh. maybe one of those years. It was, but we, yeah, I, I always enjoy visiting with him. I think he's, you know, I was telling Pat when we were riding around today, the thing that strikes you first about Mike is how how smart he is. Yeah. I mean, this. I mean, this guy's probably too smart to be coaching football. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but uh, we, you we, know, he's a really bright, intelligent, and engaging guy. And we, I'm not going to say anything else nice about him. That's it. Sure. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We. We. The, the law degree comes yeah. forefront. There, there's no doubt. Th can we keep you? Can we keep you on headset for yeah, a little bit? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Love it. We're, we're going to take a break. We'll talk a little Cougar football. Get the national perspective from Reese Davis. What a great show we've got here at Zeppos here on the Washington State IMG Sports Network. Cougar Coaches Show. Give us a call on the bookie call in line at 866-COUG-TALK. That's 1-866-268-4825. Now, back to the show. All right, we're back here live at Zeppos with Coach Leach, of course, and Reese Davis of ESPN Game Day and, and so much national attention. Coach, what's it like for you getting ready for this game against the Ducks? It's a big game. It's a game for the Pac-12 North with ESPN Game Day and so much national attention here on campus. I think there's a lot of energy on campus uh, for sure. Uh, a lot more interviews, a lot more interviews, uh, you know, uh, for, but for, for the team, it really, it works out pretty good. I mean, everybody's excited about it, but by the same token, um, you know, we're at the hotel uh, getting ready for the game so you can focus in on that, which that's important, of course. And then, um, and we've been excited, you know, we're excited to play the Ducks every year and, um, uh, so, you know, and it's the same thing. I mean, it's like all the stuff I said last year about the Ducks and the year before and the year before that and the year before that, that <laughs> all still applies. I mean, they're, 
they're long and fast, and uh, we've got to play good. We get a lot of write-in questions from folks here, a lot of Twitter questions for Coach Leach and, and calls. And, and Reese, just uh, jump in and cut me off if anything comes to mind, please. But Michael wants to know, uh, how do you keep the team focused? I mean, maybe it's easy for you, but Michael here at Zeppos wants to know how you keep the team focused with a game like this. Yeah, just follow the routine. You know, really, you follow the routine. Um, they did, uh, you know, most of their interviews early in the week. And then, um, uh, and you know, I mean, Tuesdays are like a Tuesday. Wednesdays like a Wednesday, and so it goes. But then, uh, uh, you know, but then I think, um, you know, when we're not uh, practicing or meeting and things like that, I think they feel the energy on campus, too. And, you know, they're, ex they're excited. The people are excited about what we're doing, so... Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, Mark comes from Riverside, California. He's a great Coug. Mark drives, comes to Zeppos uh, every week before home games, drives from Riverside, and he kind of cuts the line here on, on questions. This is obviously a non-football question. I think he is well aware of the answer of this, but maybe wants you to talk about what role, if any, did you have in naming your children, especially your son? Who, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what role did I have? Um, I, believe, I believe he's referencing Cody. Is right. It? Yeah. Well, I was from Cody, Wyoming, right. but by then we didn't live in Cody. And then, um, uh, they, you know, there was, uh, uh, and I can't, there were a couple really tough uh, players named Cody. You know, there were several because Cody got, and, and that's the one thing I guess I regret a little bit about it is, uh, you know, these names will go through where it's overly popular to the point where you think you thought of something and you didn't think of anything because everybody else <laughs> thought of it at exactly the same time. And then, um, but I don't know, he's done pretty well, you know. Um, and, uh, and to be perfectly honest, as I'm inclined to uh, go to a beach or something on vacation, uh, he always wants to go back to Wyoming and the horses and mountains and all that. Well, there you go. It's a beautiful country for sure. Hey, Cl <coughs> Clive's from Southern California. And uh, yeah, Cl there's Clive. Yeah, and Clive says, hey, and, and, uh, and Clive brings up a really, you know, kind of more to the topic with, with a big game on hand here. There are 33 Cougs from Southern California, and it's a huge recruiting base in Los Angeles, and ESPN Game Day brings so much national exposure and, and attention, and how, how much does it help recruiting? How much does it help uh, give that exposure to other high school athletes who, who might want to come here to, to play for Washington State? Well, I think, it, you know, all the exposure helps, uh, you know, kind of the George Steinbrenner theory, you know, all publicity is good, you know, and uh, <laughs> although I have discovered that some's better than others. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it helps. I think, you know, I think players, I um, mean, it's intangible. It's difficult to describe it, but players want energy. Players want excitement, and I think it's, you know, something, uh, you know, that, that, you, that you feel. And so I think it's extremely beneficial that way. No what, what do you do, Mike, if you sense a team maybe is feeling it too much, if they're feeling a little too much of the energy on campus, if they seem anxious or something? Uh, you know, um, I had a couple players uh, play for the Patriots. And uh, the, the starting point, the sign, if it's still there, I guess. I, I've never been in the complex. It says, uh, uh, don't listen to the noise. Every day when they're uh, leaving the Patriots complex, it says, don't listen to the noise. And, um, and you know, we talk about football times, football time. And so if it's practice or a meeting, you're just locked in on football and everything else is on the outside. And then, um, uh, you know, so hopefully we're disciplined with that. And then you know, the important thing, you try to make sure everybody's focused on the details of their technique and their work, and that's a pretty good indicator, but you don't want uh, some sideshow Bob out there trying to, you know, do something super or something extra that that we haven't coached or taught, because if we thought that was so important, we'd do it all the time. And then, um, you know, just uh, really communicate and uh, trust the guys beside you to do their job. Football players, uh, uh, Jed Collins, uh, who played in the NFL. Yeah, Jed, Jed uh, who's also going to be a trustee at Washington State, which is super exciting. Congrats to Jed. Played eight years in the NFL. Uh, Alex Brink, the analyst, uh, other guys we've talked to are fiercely disciplined in their routine. And I know that you, you have the routine every day. And is that in preparation for games like this? So you, have, you don't deviate, you, you can come back to... The, you know, the fundamentals that got you to where you are, and you can go, you've got your road set up with the hotel, even though it's a home game, and you kind of just stick to your plan and, and avoid, you know, put blinders on? Well, I, I think that, um, 
you know, the, the, one of the most important things in focusing is, uh, is, is everybody to know what's expected, to know what's expected, to know, you know, you tell people to focus. Well, you, you want to be pretty specific on what to focus on, and I think the routine helps, uh, helps guide and reinforce that. You know, everybody knows that uh, on Tuesday at this time we do one-on-one -on -one drill. On uh, Wednesday at this time we do red zone goal line drill, you know. Uh, you know, at this particular day, it's special teams. I mean, and I think that's important. I think um, um, uh, one of the things you battle in football is uh, you don't want it to get monotonous, but I think you got to draw the interest and uh, excitement from the people around you that you get to deal with and, uh, you know, the, the improvement and the development because in order to execute anything, you have to do it over and over and over and over and over. So... Uh, but you want to keep that interesting at the same time. And so, you know, I think uh, you, you, you got to have a balance between the two. U.S. Bank, proud sponsor of the Washington State Cougars. U.S. Bank, the power of possible. We'll step aside, take a break. Packed house here at Zeppo's. Reese Davis, Mike Leach on the Washington State IMG Sports Network. Now to look ahead at this week's game with the Coors Light Opponent Preview. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Back here live talking football, talking all yeah. kinds of things with the head coach himself, Mike Leach, and our special celebrity guest, Reese Davis. And we've put Reese to work here for a couple of segments. Uh, can, can you give us any? We, we, you know, Clay Thompson, Drew Bledsoe. There have been uh, Dolph Lundgren rumors. <laughs> Do you know, can you... Break the news on the celebrity. I'm going to put you on the spot, Reese. Do you know I, the celebrity picker? I did until today, and we had uh, we had someone who had to change some plans. So we're we're not back to we're not back to the drawing board. We're just going we're organi reorganizing. Okay. Put it that all right. way. All right, yeah, all right. So, so I, have to, I have to leave it at that. So right. huddle, the huddle is still together. Yeah, You're still, yeah. still. We thought up. we thought that is one of the things about our show, and it's great and it's fun, and people enjoy seeing who the guest picker is, but. We have this happen quite frequently. I mean, people say they're going to come, and they want to come, and, you know, people have lives. They have things to do, and they cancel, and they can't come, and now we're scrambling at the last minute. So this is not the first time this has happened, so sure, it's okay. Sure, yeah. You guys will roll. And also, yeah. you, it's amazing what you guys do, really. It's a live show. It's a, it's a rock concert <laughs> that gets announced on short notice. Mm -hmm. in, in and of itself, logistically, that, that creates its own issue. Our, our crew is amazing. Those guys are out there building the set right outside the stadium now, and they'll get that thing down probably in 
two and a half, three hours immediately after the show to get it out of the way. And they just, they stayed and we were we in Ann Arbor last week. So our bus driver and our truck drivers, they stayed there waiting to see where we were going to go. When we decided here, they hop in and they start driving to Pullman. And uh, they're, they're a big part of our family and our team. And it's, I mean, I know it sounds cliched and stuff, but I walked by the set out there, and they're out there busting tail today, you know, and it was, it's really, really cool. Well, I have, I have the luck and opportunity to speak on behalf of a lot of folks here. are going to give you a huge round of applause for coming, but they say thank you. Thank you guys for coming. And it's not a charity. Get, we, Lee Fitting came nope. on and said it's a big game. You earned it. Big earned game. It. Big yep. game. 15 years old, Crimson, with all Coach Leach has done here and, and all that the fans love. And, and Coach, it, it kind of is a culmination of a lot. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. I just want to say he's one of the great personalities in the game. Our game needs it they need guys like mike and we're glad to be able to be here to showcase your program and your school in this huge game on saturday huge thanks to reese davis for coming on thank you very much and we'll take a break on the washington state img sports network State Cougars, the power of possible. Once again, here's Matt Chazanow. Back here live at Zeppos. What a great, what a great opportunity to have the host of ESPN Game Day on the show here at Zeppos with Coach Leach. All right, Coach, let's let's get to it. Uh, we talked, a, we haven't talked a ton of football here. We we had our opponent preview segment, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the Ducks. Justin Herbert, how good is Justin Herbert? What do you see defensively from the Ducks? How, how good are the Ducks when you look at at film? You know, again, it's hard to add much that I haven't over the years. They're um, they're athletic like they always are. Uh, they're fast. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Herbert's the next of a quality quarterback that plays for Oregon and, um, you know, does a good job running the unit. They try to keep you honest with he'll take, uh, take off once in a while and then, uh, you know, just deals it off, kind of pop passes and sometimes downfield. And then, of course, uh, uh, you know, they twist up uh, the backs and receivers and uh, hand it to them. Part of what makes league play <clears throat> either difficult or, or easier or, or just different in and of, uh, than non-league play is, is you mentioned it. It's players you're familiar with. It's tendencies. You and I spoke just last year about Jim Levitt and uh, Mario Cristobal, who's the first-year Duck head coach. He, he was there last year. as a, He's an old O-line tight ends guy. And um, they, they've had, uh, you know, of course, Joe Salavea is there. And, and we all know Jim Mastro. They're, so you, you immediately go into this game really knowing quite a bit, don't you, about what they want to do. 
Yeah, I mean, well, well which is uh, which is good and bad. I mean, you got, uh, you know, you've got uh, Mario, uh, who's uh, you know got a head coaching record and and uh, has been a head coach before, so you have a sense of uh, uh, of what he likes. But you know, they've stuck with a lot of uh, what they're doing previously there at Oregon, and then. Uh, you know, uh, the good thing about Jim Levitt is you know what he's going to do. The bad thing is he does it all the time and has for years because it's really good. So, you know, I'd almost rather have a guy that doesn't know what he's doing that you're, you're not sure what he's going to do. So, um, and Jim and I are, are, are pretty good friends. Uh, Jim and I uh, are, are good friends. Um, uh, hung out in Key West one night. Uh, uh had a bongo drum, which did Jim's really good at playing, <laughs> and um, and then um, uh, you know both our wives were uh, ticked off in the end, so it worked out great for everybody. <laughs> oh, Jim Levitt to DC uh, for the Ducks. He, he's been around a long time. He was the head coach for USF for 13, 14 years. They were up to number two in the country at one point. The USF Bulls. He built that program up from scratch. They were non-existent than the FCS and then uh, in the old Big East and, and uh, was a DC at Colorado and, and then the 49ers. He's got a ton of experience. Yeah, yeah, he's been all over. And he's, uh, you know, was that, uh, well, it goes clear back. When I first met him, uh, uh, he was at Kansas State uh, uh, with uh, Bill Snyder and uh, him and Bob Stoops were co-DCs at the same time. Yeah, in fact, uh, got a write-in question here specifically about Bob Stoops. This is our first. We, we have somebody mildly enemy territory here. An Oklahoma fan is in our midst, and that's noted on this paper. Do, do, they, do you have a best memory of a Bob, do you have a Bob Stoops story that, that uh, you care to share from your time at Oklahoma? Uh, you know, Bob was uh, Bob's always uh, he's a very steady guy. You know, it's like uh, from Youngstown, Ohio. Seems like he's from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, uh, you know, uh, has the, uh, uh, says, you know, a lot, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and, and, you know, the Youngstown group ha hangs in a pack, you know, all the coaches from Youngstown, you see, if you see one at a convention, you'll see them all. So it's fun to hear about Youngstown and, and, and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, just very, very fun. His dad was a coach. His brothers are all coaches. Um. You know, just uh, never strayed from the fundamentals. You know, just a very uh, fundamental guy. Uh, uh, fun guy to talk to. Always, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, up, uh, he, he very down to earth, which that's not always the case with uh, some of the head coaches you run across. But Bob Stoops, a very down to earth uh, guy. The, the, mo the biggest compliment I can say is really he's a, He's a completely regular guy. Got a question here from, uh, oh, by the way, there, Pepperdine grad, uh, Oklahoma fan and Pepperdine grad, another connection to you there. But, uh, uh, Greg Gluck, Greg on Twitter uh, asks, and I, I, I think I know, you know, game day announces only a week in advance, and a lot of this stuff's worked out long prior, but uh, are there more recruits? To, do, you, do you pounce on an opportunity like this to bring more recruits in with, you know, the, the whole nation looking at Pullman. I don't know if, how that stuff gets worked out that far in advance. Do you know? You know, well, well it's difficult to do that, really, right. because they have their own games. And so a lot of times this time of year, uh, your recruiting's based on uh, the high school players off week uh, and, you know, when they can do it. So, um, yeah, we do have some recruits in town, um, and uh, which I think's good. I mean, so we're pleasantly surprised, given the fact they're going to be here, that we've got game day as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not an exact science. You got the, you got their schedule and then, uh, you know, you try to finesse it when, uh, you can, uh, have players or a combination of have players around them, but also, uh, that they can see the excitement and the energy of uh, the community and the school. Uh, thanks for that question, Greg. I am almost scared to ask this question for maybe obvious reasons, but Aram, who's at uh, Zeppo's all the time, he may be here tonight, Aram's a great coog. Uh, he needs facial hair advice, and, um, and uh, I should probably ask as well. And uh, he hasn't shaved his goatee off in nine years, and he's asking if he should and, and go for the, what he calls here the Minshew mustache magic. <laughs> that's what, those are his words, not mine. I don't know. Uh, that, that's a that's that's a tough question there. Um, yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that. I only briefly had a mustache. I mean, I I don't shave every day, and obviously, but 
Um, the uh, <clears throat> um, I only had a mustache one time, and it's while I was watching Lonesome Dove. <laughs> and uh, and Lonesome Dove goes long enough that um, you can grow a mustache in that period of time. <laughs> and and um, but. Uh, you know, that's a tough... Uh, I've never had the attachment to facial hair that some do. And then uh, I would say uh, you could change it up. Uh, <coughs> go Gardner Minshew mustache or just get, get a full Fidel Castro going, you know. <laughs> Aram, thanks very much for, for that question. We... Uh well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a break. We'll take a break right here, and we'll come back, and we'll get to some more of these questions. We're live here at Zeppos here on the Washington State IMG Sports Network. minutes left a couple more segments as the Cougs take on the Ducks this week it's Oregon week and both teams come in five and one the Ducks rank 12th in the country and the Cougs are up into the rankings now at 25th as they just knocked off the Beavers two weeks ago and come off the bye week and uh, are currently ranked five and one I, I'm remiss I, I want to mention also uh, Reese Davis was on here I got a text from Cool, great Cindy Brunson, who does so many, so much great broadcast work. She's known Reese Davis for such a long time, and I meant to say it while Reese was here. And uh, Reese gave her a shout out back in 2001 after her first Sports Center hit, and they've been buddies ever since. And that's a great connection. So much thanks to Reese as well, and uh, and another connection he has to to Coug Nation. Uh, hey, a, a fan wants to know, uh, during the USC game, this is a write-in question from here, uh, there were three pass interference calls, four defensive holding calls, a bunch of refereeing stuff. There, there's been less of that ever since, and they want to know if there were conscious adjustments made, or maybe that was a game flow thing, or uh, was it a coaching change on some stuff with the players? What's the, is there anything that we can extrapolate from that throughout the year here? Uh, no, not really. I mean, just uh, play with good technique, play with as sharp a technique as you can. Uh, you know, and some of the elements that existed with that, in my opinion, I'm not um, allowed to comment on. So uh, we got to leave it at that. But you, you try to coach and play with the very best technique that you possibly can. All right, thanks for that write-in question very much. This is uh, an anonymous question, and I don't know, you know, there, there's all kinds of stories 
And I know Oregon's got to deal with uh, Daff, uh, Donald Duck, I think. Do you know uh, why would a school, this quite fan ask, why would a school name their team <coughs> the Ducks? I don't, I don't know the, uh, the, the true derivation of that. I'm not sure if you're aware. I, I don't know where it started. I mean, in, uh, with all due respect to our opponents, uh, I've always thought the Ducks is, are kind of a, a cool mascot. Um, I hunted a lot of Ducks uh, when I was a kid, and so <laughs> then I had... Um, a lot of respect for them, you know, over time you get to know about, uh, you know, their habitats, how far they fly, you know, what they do, where they go, and it, uh, and they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are pretty impressive. I mean, they're remarkably impressive, and anybody that's ever been out there when, uh, you know, when it's uh, below zero and there's uh, half the river's uh, frozen over, and then, uh, but uh, in the middle of it's uh, moving too fast, uh, you know, uh, and then you're, you know, you, if you wing a duck, then your dog goes out there and has hand-to-hand -hand combat with that duck until he gets him. And uh, they, they, it is a, it is kind of an impressive mascot, I think. I mean, and that and the fact, um, <coughs> you know, I mean, everybody wants to be a bulldog or a tiger. Or, you know, those, everybody's bulldogs, tigers, bulldogs, tigers, bulldogs, tigers. And then uh, and some lions thrown in there, but... Uh, uh, so it's good. It's good to have uh, ducks, and then, uh, and then uh, I've always wondered. Pitt State's the gorillas, which is outstanding, and uh, I've always wondered why there's not more gorillas and sharks. To be honest with you, sharks would be sharks would be a good one. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, yeah, and well, yeah, right, go kooks for sure. Um, hey, I want to ask you. I want to ask you about, and of course, we've we've joked a lot about uh, all kinds of stuff. But in all seriousness, Gardner Minshew. Uh, leads the nation in passing, 21 touchdowns, two of them rushing, only four interceptions. How, how good has Gardner been in, in your eyes? I mean, how good is Gardner Minshew? Well, I think, uh, you know, I think his best games are ahead of him. Um, and the reason I think that is, uh, you know, when there's a lot of adjustment when it comes to, you know, you, you've got a bunch of young receivers like we do that uh, don't have uh, a ton of snaps under their belt. I mean, we're getting more. Um, and then as they adjust and develop as players, then he adjusts around and becomes familiar with his personnel. And I think, uh, you know, we're still making progress there. So I do think um, <clears throat> there's some upside there that uh, uh, will continue to get better. And then, you know, we, uh, we only have him for this year, but um, I do think, uh, you know, more and more as uh, – is we integrate some of these young players that uh, there's going to be a familiarity to uh, develop even more, um, you know, because it's all about execution and timing. And the better we can do that, the better we got a chance to be. Let's let's go to his receivers now. And, and there have been so many really good ones who have who've been here since you've been here. But Tay Martin, Aesop Winston, Des Patman. And, and, you know, in moments this year, I mean, Travell had the six-catch game a few weeks back, and Kyle Sweet's been so steady. How good are these receivers for, for Gardner Minshew? You talk about increasing chemistry, but Tay Martin seems really special, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's, he's really explosive, and he's physical for his size. And, um, but, you know, I think his technique is, is, is still improving and still has uh, a long ways to go. Um, <clears throat> Aesop's got some really crafty qualities to him, and, uh, he continues to get better and his uh, timing more precise. I think uh, Des Patman's just scratched the surface. He's starting to uh, play physical, realize how imposing and physical he is. And then uh, as he practices with more precision, you see, you know, his technique and things like that uh, steadily improving. Uh, Calvin Jackson, um, you know, and uh, we he didn't uh, play a lot early because... Uh, just becoming familiar with the scheme and some things like that. But, you know, just really a quick burst and some things like that. We got more receivers, but I lose track all of them. Kyle Sweet kind of, uh, you know, has is, is, is been there the longest and is kind of, you know, the example of doing things uh, a specific way. And then uh, Jameer Calvin played very fast uh, this week, and we got to keep that going. Uh, does it? You know, uh, when he sticks his toe on the ground, explodes out, he can really do some good things. Uh, Renard Bell, um, I think he's just scratched the surface too, continues to improve. And and uh, Travell Harris, uh, uh, same thing. I mean, they're all just young guys. One thing exciting about young guys, it can be frustrating too, but 
What's exciting is uh, you see uh, improvement at a more rapid rate as uh, they start to get the hang of things. You've got this system, the, the system that has changed, really changed the game. You've got uh, Dana Holgerson and Lincoln Riley running it and, and uh, Neil Brown and all, all these guys are all over the country running the air raid. But you, you, you've got it and you've got different quarterbacks, Luke Falk and now Gardner Minshew and, and, and uh, you know, so many prior. And they go and they take it and they, and they make it theirs in their own way. <coughs> You know, you, Gardner throwing the ball deep to Tay over the top. H how much individualism is there from your quarterback, and how much are you dictating how they run this system that you've, you've developed so much over the years? <clears throat> well, it's a little of both. I mean, certain receivers are going to catch certain routes better than others, and then uh, you say develop a sense of timing with the quarterbacks, and, you know, you're inclined to run and throw those routes at a certain time in a certain way. And then... Um, so I think it's a combination of both, really. And then uh, likewise with the quarterbacks, there's things that some quarterbacks do better than others and routes that they just like. And then, uh, you know, if they check something, stuff that they <clears throat> like to check. And, uh, um, you know, when you can really do it quickly without any hesitation, then, you know, you can really become explosive. And you're always trying to improve on that. Has there been a quarterback that you have has run it? <coughs> You're in, you know, sort of your, the favorite representation of the air raid? Is there a guy you'd pick out? And, uh, you know, you've been doing this since Lubbock and Tim Couch in Kentucky and all these guys. Where, I guess I'm asking, where does Gardner fall in that? It's only been half a season. Maybe it's not large enough of a sample size. Maybe it's something you kind of think about after the years. But where, has Gardner done this? I know the numbers are great and you've won so many games, but where does Gardner kind of sit in that pecking <clears throat> order of, of how guys have, have facilitated the air raid system? Well, I think they're all good, and he's up there for sure. And then uh, one thing that he does is, uh, you know, he's got uh, <clears throat> he's got a little bit of uh, individual charisma that translates to the rest of the team and elevates the people around him, part of it, because he's so excited to be out there. I, it, it, it makes the guy that's thinking about whether or not he's going to be excited, excited. And some of those guys will come out there and think about whether they're going to be excited. <laughs> and then... Um, and, um, you know, they don't, uh, they don't really want to cross Gardner because they're not sure what will roll out. And, you know, and he's, he's not one of those, um, you know, he's just high energy and optimistic and stuff like that. But he, he's got a craziness to him that I don't think uh, some of those uh, receivers want to test, especially if they <laughs> expect to get the ball. So, um, and then, the, you know, the linemen love it because uh, Gardner's almost an honorary lineman as far as, uh, you know, uh, what, he th what he thinks, does, and, you know, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty and that type of thing. Speaking of which, let let's flip it real quick. We've only got a couple more minutes left <coughs> in the show. Taylor Comfort, nose tackle, former walk-on. He's a redshirt senior now. He's a Washington native. He, uh, six foot 280. <coughs> he's been the guy in the middle, and, and he's been really good, hasn't he? He's, he's been a guy who's been beyond just a pleasant surprise. He's played great. What are your thoughts on the defensive line and the way Taylor's been? <clears throat> well, Taylor's got, uh, he's naturally got great pad level. And um, <laughs> so he comes off the ball low and, uh, and strong and arms are ripping and flying, tends to create piles. And as he creates piles and gets the offensive line on different levels, then um, you got Big who just uh, kind of consistently plays hard uh, over and over. He's always had the knack uh, to pass rush. And then, uh, you know, Logan Tago's just kind of an amazing athlete. Um, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, people always say, when are you going to get a true tight end? I'm going to get a true tight end when I fill up with D linemen. It's pretty much when it's going to happen. <laughs> and then um, uh, Logan Tago's the best tight end on the, you know, the true tight end on the team and was a great tight end in high school. But he's kind of preoccupied with playing on the edge on the defensive line. Yeah, Logan uh, is a senior, one of the Pago Pago kids, and uh, he's got four and a half tackles for loss this year. That's already a career high in a season for him. We're just halfway through the deal. And, and Will Rogers has been really good off the edge too, hasn't he? He's, he's longer than these other guys, six foot five, 250, kind of a long rangey athlete and looks a little bit different, but he's been effective at times too. Yeah, both the, uh, both the, uh, uh, the Willies are, are doing good. Yeah. Uh, Willie Rogers, Willie Taylor. Both explosive, uh, you know, Sybil's on the edge. Uh, we moved him out there to the edge, and then um, he was productive right away. Real long-armed guy. Uh, thinks he's going to play quarterback, but uh, I let him think that. Sybil thinks he's a QB, huh? Well, they all do, but... <laughs> <coughs> 
Uh, is Peyton Pelour as, as good as you've ever seen him since he's been here? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And he does a really good job of, uh, you know, he's kind of the voice on the field of the defense and, um, you know, leads by example. He's always, uh, 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 you know, I mean, he, he, he's a real fun guy to have around. He's not, he's not incredibly talkative, but he, uh, uh, you know, by example, you see him, uh, you know, running and playing just incredibly hard that uh, others do too. You've got some really big-time leaders in the secondary. Also, Jalen Thompson, Darian <laughs> Moulton's been around a long time. Hunter Dale's a redshirt senior. A, a lot of senior leadership. The secondary, it's the number one pass defense in the Pac-12. Yeah, they and they do a good job running to the ball. You know, I think, uh, um, you know, Coach Clay's and uh, does a really good job uh, – putting those guys in a position to be successful. Clock never winds down at Northern Quest. 24-7 gaming, great restaurants and lounges, <laughs> movie theaters, luxury rooms, and more. Details at northernquest.com. We're out of time. Thanks so much for coming and listening. Reese Davis, much thanks to Reese for coming on. Of course, thanks to you, Coach. Good luck there on Saturday. All right, well, thank you. Much thanks to Jared Prengruber and Don Catronio as well. 4.30 kickoff.